In the second grade fractions unit, students will partition objects in halves, fourths, and eighths using area models. Students will also name the fractional parts. The materials needed are pattern blocks, one inch color tiles, and dot paper. One misconception that students may have is thinking that one eighth must be larger than one fourth of the same whole because eight is greater than four, rather than understanding that the greater the number of parts of a whole, the smaller the parts. The student counts four fractional parts and eight fractional parts. The student says eighths are larger than fourths because eight is greater than four. To help clear up this misconception, use visuals such as fractional area or linear models to visualize the approximate size of each fraction. In this lesson, students will use an area model such as circles to determine fractional parts of a whole. Students will partition circles into fractional parts and will use the fractional parts to create a penguin. Students will also label the fractional parts on a recording sheet. Provide students with a copy of the penguin body. There are two whole circles on the paper. Provide students with a copy of the penguin beak, wings, eyes, and feet resource. Have students cut out the circle that has been partitioned into halves and color the circle black. What do you notice about this whole circle? It has a line that is partitioning the circle into two equal parts. Have students cut the circle along the dotted line. How many equal parts do you have now? There are two. How can we name each part? Each part is one half because there are two total pieces in the whole circle. Each one half should be glued by the whole body circle to represent wings. Have students cut out the circle that has been partitioned into fourths and color the circle orange. What do you notice about this whole circle? It has lines that are partitioning the circle into four equal parts. Have students cut the circle along the dotted lines. How many equal parts do you have now? There are four. How can we name each part? Each part is one fourth because there are four total pieces in the whole circle. Three of the one fourths should be glued to represent the feet and the beak. Have students cut out the circle that has been partitioned into eighths. What do you notice about this whole circle? It has lines that are partitioning the circle into eight equal parts. Have students cut the circle along the dotted lines. How many equal parts do you have now? There are eight. How can we name each part? Each part is one eighth because there are eight total pieces in the whole circle. Two of the one eighths should be glued to represent the eyes. Using the fraction penguin recording sheet, we will ask students, how did we use whole circles and fractional parts to create our fraction penguins? We cut whole circles into different numbers of parts. Model how to label the whole circle and the fractional parts of each partition, partition circle. Have students observe the whole circle that was partitioned into halves and the whole circle that was partitioned into fourths. What do you notice about the number of halves compared to the number of fourths? There are fewer halves and more fourths. What do you notice about the size of the halves compared to the size of the fourths? The halves are larger in size and the fourths are smaller in size. Finally, have students observe the whole circle that was partitioned into fourths and the whole circle that was partitioned into eighths. What do you notice about the number of fourths compared to the number of eighths? There are fewer fourths and more eighths. What do you notice about the size of the fourths compared to the size of the eighths? 
The fourths are larger in size and the eighths are smaller in size. In this lesson, students will use an area model such as pattern blocks to determine fractional parts of a whole. The area relationships between different pattern blocks can be used to explore fractional relationships. When using pattern blocks, it is important that one shape be designated as the whole. Students will then use equal sized pattern blocks to partition the whole area. Begin by designating one yellow hexagon as one whole. Show students two yellow hexagons. Cover the first hexagon with two red pattern blocks. Cover the second hexagon with one red pattern block, one green triangle, and one blue rhombus. What is the same and what is different about how we covered each of the yellow hexagons? The first hexagon is composed of equal sized parts. The second hexagon is composed of parts that are not equal in size. Model how the first hexagon has been partitioned into two equal parts and is an example of halves while the second hexagon has been partitioned into unequal parts and does not show an example of halves. Students can use the recording sheet to partition the whole, name the fractional part, and color the specified fraction of the whole. Continue by designating one blue rhombus as one whole. How many green triangles or equal parts are needed to cover the whole rhombus? There are two equal parts. Model how to partition the rhombus into two equal parts by covering the shape with two green triangles. Each green triangle is one half of the blue rhombus. Students can use the recording sheet to partition the whole, name the fractional part, and color the specified fraction of the whole. Pattern blocks may be combined to form other polygons for students to partition. Designate two yellow hexagons as one whole. How many red pattern blocks or equal parts are needed to cover the whole polygon? Four equal parts. Model how to partition the polygon into four equal parts by covering the polygon with four red pattern blocks. Each red pattern block is one fourth of the polygon. Now color two fourths of the polygon. In this lesson, students will continue using an area model, such as a variety of polygons, to determine fractional parts of a whole. Students will partition various polygons by folding. As was done in previous lessons, before partitioning any given polygon, designate the whole. Using the Folding for Fractions work mat and the Folding for Fractions polygons, students will create two examples of a given fractional part, as well as create a non-example. A set of polygons that will be partitioned has been provided. Students need to cut out the polygons. Begin by designating one rhombus as one whole, placing it on the work mat under the whole column. In previous lesson, we partitioned objects into equal parts by cutting circles as well as by covering pattern blocks. What is one way we might partition a rhombus into two equal parts or halves? By cutting, by drawing a line on the polygon to show equal parts, or by folding. 
Using a second rhombus, how can we fold the rhombus to show two equal parts or halves? The rhombus may be folded horizontally or vertically, and a line can be drawn to show two equal parts. Explain to students that when the rhombus is folded in half horizontally or vertically, this partition creates two equal parts that are the same size and same shape. Actually demonstrate how the two equal parts that are on top of each other after folding are the same size and same shape. Allow students the opportunity to show how to partition a rhombus two different ways by folding, drawing the partition, and placing each on the work mat under the example one and example two columns. Finally, fold the remaining rhombus in a way that does not show two equal parts. How do we know that our rhombus shows two unequal parts? Each part is not the same size. Students will continue showing various ways to partition polygons by folding using the set of rectangles to show four equal parts or fourths and another set of rectangles to show eight equal parts or eighths. Have students observe the rectangles that were partitioned into fourths and the rectangles that were partitioned into eighths. What do you notice about the number of fourths compared to the number of eighths? There are fewer fourths and more eighths. What do you notice about the size of the fourths compared to the size of the eighths? The fourths are larger in size and the eighths are smaller in size. Finally, the fractional parts and observations may be recorded on the Folding for Fractions recording sheet. In this lesson, students will continue using an area model, such as squares or rectangles on dot paper, to determine fractional parts of a whole. Students will partition squares or rectangles into fractional parts that may be oriented in varying ways. Students will also partition squares or rectangles into fractional parts that may be the same size, but a different shape. Begin by providing each student with color tiles, crayons, and dot paper. Display the square that has been partitioned into two equal parts on dot paper. Students will trace along the dotted line so that the partition is apparent. Using what we know about area, how can we show that the two parts or halves are equal by cutting, by folding, or by covering each square inch with a color tile and counting to see if they are equal in size. Model how to cover, color, and count each part with color tiles. Because each part has the same size area, the square has been partitioned into two equal parts or halves. Display the square that has been partitioned into two equal parts on dot paper, but yet has parts that are being shown in a different orientation. How can we show that the two parts or halves are equal, even though the partition is vertical? By covering each square inch with a color tile and counting to see if they are equal in size. Because each part has the same size area, the square has been partitioned into two equal parts or halves. Display the square that has been partitioned in a way that does not show two equal parts. How do we know that our square shows two unequal parts? By covering each square inch with a color tile, the areas are not equal in size. The next series of squares on dot paper are examples and a non-example of fourths. 
Display the square that has been partitioned into four equal parts on dot paper. How can we show that the four parts or fourths are equal? Because each part has the same size area, the square has been partitioned into four equal parts or fourths. Display the square that has been partitioned into four equal parts on dot paper, but yet has two of the parts that are being shown in a different orientation. How can we show that the four parts or fourths are equal, even though the partitions are vertical and horizontal? Because each part has the same size area, the square has been partitioned into four equal parts or fourths. Display the square that has been partitioned in a way that does not show four equal parts. How do we know that our square shows four unequal parts? Because each part does not have the same size area, the square has not been partitioned into four equal parts. The, ne the next series of squares on dot paper are examples and a non-example of eights. Students may continue to partition polygons of various sizes using the dot paper. Reinforce the idea that polygons may be partitioned using dot paper in many ways. The resulting fractional parts may or may not be the same shape and or orientation, but must be the same size and can be justified by counting the area in square units. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of Elementary Math Minutes. We hope you'll find these videos helpful and we look forward to you joining us next time. See you then.